Welcome back to Welsh Miniature Board Gamer, and this is my monthly roundup of what I got painted, this being the monthly of July 2023. So, at the moment, it is boiling hot here in sunny Wales, although it's of course raining and very humid, so I haven't really painted as much as I would really like to paint, but I've painted some, so we'll see as this video goes on. So if you've seen my video previously, you would have seen that I have bought the Stargrave sca Scavengers and that's what this first part of this video will be sort of showing you, is those miniatures that I painted up for that. I've been using a lot of speed paint lately and I'm going to try and wean myself off it because as you can see, it shows really nice, you know, there's a lot of depth in the colours etc. But I, f I find that I'm maybe being a bit lazy now and I'm sort of using it as a crutch more than using it as, you know, the occasional, you know, technique. So I'm going to try and go more back sort of traditional painting, like more like I did with this guy. So I did do proper painting here, you know, base, highlight, shade, you know, all those sort of things, instead of just putting down a uh, speed paint. And I think it looks better. I really like these sort of trench coat blues that I've done, it's kind of... Um, uh, dare I say German officer during uh, World War Two? that sort of colour and uh, yeah and I think they're gonna work really well for this um, this is not a test when I do buy it at the second edition which I'm bound to buy so you know <laughs> I'm sort of kind of getting myself ready for it and I went for this sort of ghoul sort of uh, theme to the uh, army that I might do so this is the head from a mantic plague zombie and he looks pretty good as like a commissar or uh, something like that, you know, an officer for this evil sort of, um, what am I thinking, evil ghoul-like army. So this is what I mean by using speed paint a bit much. This guy I painted near enough completely with speed paint and he looks okay, but he's not standout. He kind of, yeah, you know. And yeah, I want uh, I want to try and push myself a little bit more going back the way I used to paint, you know, with the usual layers, etc. One thing I will say about these scavenger mini miniatures, it does seem like we're all going to be wearing trench coats in the far future or in our sort of post-apocalyptic world. It, it appears that it's a, just a fashion statement that we're not going to be able to get away from. So, uh, you know, all of the scavengers are wearing trench coats, which, okay. Embrace your trench coat, get them now before, you know, there's the mad rush for the apocalyptic trench coat. So this guy has definitely got that sort of World War II bad guy vibe about him, but he's also got a helmet, a bit like um, the bad guy from the newer Star Wars, what's his name? Kylo Ren. See, I did remember it, even though I tried to wipe that from my memory, I did remember his name. Kylo Ren. He's kind of got a Kylo Ren helmet, um, which... Yeah, it looks pretty good on this guy. And then we got this guy, which I really like because in this is not a test. There is something called a line breaker, I believe, and they use sort of use like a shock baton and a shield. So I took the shield off a Mantic Enforcer and I put it on him, and it looks really good on him. You know, it's a huge shield, and he's got this baton. I do like that the Scavenger's kit has got melee weapons really like that it's something that a lot of sci-fi and post-apocalyptic games mention and then they don't have any miniatures that you can actually put these things on but these are really good i really like that this guy i sort of kit bashed with a bit of cadian uh, games workshop parts yes see i could say cadian when i not overthinking it not like in the review where i keep calling him a canadian <laughs> And this guy's got sort of like that Tommy Hero sort of steampunk look about him, using a lot of parts from the Forge Mantic Forge Fathers. Uh, the backpack is a, a weapon, I believe, from one of the vermin, the big dudes. Uh, so yeah, I, I think he comes out quite well. He does look like some sort of steampunk World War One sort of, you know, that sort of adventurer type thing. Yeah, and yeah, I like I like the way he turned out. A bit of a mishmash of different miniatures etc and it worked really well 
So for the next four miniatures, they are for the Marvel Zombies game, and these are the Shield Specialists. So I got four of these painted up in the same scheme. You've seen them before, you know, there's nothing really too exciting to say about them. One of them I've noticed here on your left uh, broke his baton off. I don't know when that happened, but yeah, so he's a bit battenless, but he, he still, you know, he still looks okay. And I don't think you notice that he hasn't actually got his baton anymore. And on to the next miniatures. So the next one is, the again, something that you may have seen me do a review for. I think they're the WizKids, the, the Nolzers, or they're one of the D&D &D or Pathfinder miniatures. I forget now that I've painted, you know, these ones, and I painted them uh, up. Well, this one, I think, was a speed paint, and I actually didn't mind the way the speed paint looked on this miniature, because it was kind of hard to pick out stuff on it, but uh, you could really go into the detail on it with, with all the banding, but I think... That really kind of worked as it did. And then there was this uh, dwarven, uh, like, warrior, I think he was. Looks like he's doing a Haxel Jim, Jim Duggan. Ho! Oh! Uh, with his axe up in the air. air. Uh, you're probably too young to remember that, but there you go. If you're an oldie like myself, you will remember Haxel Jim Duggan. But yeah, yeah, I really like this miniature. He had this terrible uh, mold line going down his back, which is really unfortunate. I didn't clean it up very well. It's mainly because I wanted to show it. It was there, but, you know, for you, this review, etc. Then we had these two barbarian, bar barbarian dwarves. I was going to call them barbarian barbarians, but barbarian dwarves. Yeah, this uh, dwarf with a huge looking sword. Uh... Must be like a hand and a half sword or something. Uh, it's a very big sword. And I've done her in sort of that traditional ginger dwarf. And uh, we're in leather armor instead of metal, which is kind of cool. This dwarf, yeah, again, it was meant to be the barbarians, I think, uh, dwarf. But I painted her up in metal armor because it just seemed more like metal than uh, leathers. Even though she's meant to be a barbarian and, you know... Most barbarians, I don't think wear metal armor, although I don't see why, but I'm sure in the rules of different games, you're not meant to wear metal if you're a barbarian. So this guy is from the Marvel Zombies, and he's Colonel Ross? General Ross? Someone Ross. He's, he's the enemy of uh, the Hulk. I seem to remember him in one of the first Hulk movies. He was uh, in that... And I, th I think he came out quite well. I quite like the sculpt, actually. And, um, you know, his facial features are really quite well seen that these are kind of quite a soft plastic. So this guy is an oldie. So these are Ral Parfum miniatures. And they got the, uh, the date on the bottom of them. It was 1988. So, yeah. And I would have got them probably very close to that time. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this is another miniature which is very close to my wife's age, which is kind of worrying, uh, but there you go. I painted it up in this sort of non-metallic armour uh, to make it sort of, you know, look a bit different. That's the size comparison I'm showing you now uh, to some of the more modern miniatures. And as you can see, they're quite, quite different in proportion and size because these are the old miniatures and things weren't quite so huge as they are now. Then there was this female version of that dwarf. And I really like the um, paint scheme. Uh, I like the way that I did like sort of a non-metallic armor with a metallic uh, like weapon and shield um, embellishments. I, I think it shows up quite nice. You know, it's like a contrast between the armor and the uh, golden weapons. And I really like these miniatures. They they're really nice miniatures. I like these old metal ones. They had so much more character than some of these newer miniatures. And then we had this half orc warrior. He was a grenadier. And this one is 1986, it said on the bottom of the uh, miniature. So, yeah, this is one of my earlier miniatures that I would have got uh, when I was just a wee little lad. Um, but, yeah, I, th I think I painted him pr pretty good, you know. He... he 
however you paint them, they look very sort of traditional looking. And I kind of like that. I like that, you know, whatever you do with them, they look traditional. I'll, you know, that's really cool. I like it. And I think I painted him up pretty darn well. I think it shows when I enjoy painting the miniatures. They look better than when I'm just doing it to get it done. So I have to say that my favourite miniatures of this month would have to be these two dwarfs. I really liked painting them and I think they turned out really well. What's your favourite of the, uh, the miniatures I painted this month? Save for yourself. So all in all I painted up 22 miniatures which isn't bad considering this is the summer and I am melting here. So it's going to be goodbye from me Welsh Miniature Board Gamer. And please leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe. Goodbye.